Hi everyone, welcome back to the Velvet Lounge. Continuing part two of my series, and there might be a part three, as I stated before, it'll be two or three parts um, regarding how you can win at live auctions. So um, just a continuation to finish what I was saying from the last video is, um, so for $12 and some change, and that $12 included the 20%, um, buyer's premium, which was added to the $10 for my winning bid, plus we had to pay the sales tax. So in total, I think it was like $13, $14 and some change. Um, we ended up with hundreds of dollars of merchandise because underneath that white cardboard and underneath all of those Lucite boxes, there were um, antique toys that were Corgis, Hubilees, um Tootsies, and I don't know, some, uh, there were probably like four or five different brands. So, and they were all original. Most of them had their original um, packaging. Some did not. There were, like I said, a couple that had just, and I think it maybe was from use, don't know, but just minor little like scratches or whatever, or paint loss, but we made a mint on that lot. So something that we spent I will say rounded up $13 for, um, we made probably well over a couple thousand dollars easily. Um, so like I said, you want to look in those corners under those tables, um, place, you know, places where people are not going to want to like basically get as dirty, if you will. They're basically looking at the stuff that's like right in, that's why grocery stores and retailers put things right in front of your face because they know that people are, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, too lazy to look up high or to reach down low. And usually the stuff that's high and the stuff that's low, those are usually the better deals, the better bargains. Sometimes it's even the healthier food is the stuff that's higher and lower. So that's a clue and a tip for you when you go grocery shopping. Um, so, you know, and that and um, the other thing which I started to talk about a little bit in the previous video, which is um, part one of this series, is, um, and I'm looking, I have notes. So that's why you'll see me like looking down. So yes, I prepare for you guys. Um, one of the things I talked about as far as preparing before you bid on an item, like doing your research and all that, is if you know that it's something you're interested in, you're going to write down the lot number, as I stated, write down what the items were. But something you could do nowadays, especially just to make sure that you don't end up with something that was damaged, that wasn't damaged previously, is take a photograph of that item before the preview. And remember, you are bidding on the stuff that they don't have a photograph for because this stuff should not be in the auction catalog. If it's in the auction catalog, you are going to pay more money for it and the chances of you making any profit on that item is very low. And you know what I mean by profit. For us, our definition of profit is if you spent a dollar, you better sell it for three or four dollars. So for us, a profit isn't buy it for a dollar, sell it for two fifty. That's only a dollar fifty profit. We want, and that's not even your full profit when you put in all of your expenses. So you might actually make a dollar profit on that item. We want more. So we want to teach you guys how to do that as well. So um, that's what you're looking for. That's why you don't want to bid on the items that are in the catalog. Or if they're not in a catalog, but they're featured, they're like right in your face in the auction house where everyone can see it. Um, for example, I remember there was a carousel horse at an auction house that we went to. That carousel horse was not in their catalog because that month they were concentrating on selling a bunch of pocket watches. Don't know what happened with that, but they ended up like not being able to sell the, like the owner of the pocket watches took them all back. So don't know what happened after that, but go walking into the auction house, like that thing, that carousel horse was all up in your eyeballs. That's, 
you know, another thing that you would not want to bid on because, I mean, who could miss it? And of course, it sold for hundreds of dollars. So like I said, when I'm talking ab about this stuff, I'm talking about, I'm going to say the stuff that's kind of incognito, the stuff that, you know, the auction auction house hasn't really put a value on. So like I said, that makes it even more important that especially let's say that there's a box because this actually happened to us because we have so many stories, but there is a box lot and you notice two incredibly expensive pieces of ceramic um, figures that are right on top, but no one in the color is super funky, like so funky. I knew just from the audience and the people that go to this auction that no one else would even give a slight care about those items. So when I saw them, it was so tempting for me not to go over and go through the entire box. But what I did is when the area cleared out a bit, I quickly put them on the table, took a picture of the back, a picture of the front, a picture of the bottom, put them right back in the box and went about my business previewing the rest, you know, of whatever and writing down lot numbers. Um, when it came time to bid, and like I said, we're going to talk about timing, when you should bid um, and how an auction sometime is broken out into different segments so that you can, of course, get the best deals. So, you know, I, the time was right, did my thing. I ended up winning that lot as well as actually I won like, I want to say 30, 40 lots that day. And in total, I think I spent like, I don't even know if we spent a hundred dollars. I'll just say 100. Um, awesome day at the auction house. We've had many of those. We've had days that we've gone to an auction and we could tell that like people were so desperate for merchandise that the prices were outrageous. And even using all of my, you know, tips of the trade and remember I am an auctioneer and have been doing this for a very long time. So I know all the ins and outs of background information that you don't see. You see something that's beautifully produced like a television show and things are just going off in tandem and, you know, the dance is beautiful. Everything is synchronized, but there's a lot that goes into an auction before it ever gets to that point and before the public is ever let in to do a preview because preview day, we should be ready to roll. So, um, you know, what you need to do as well. So, you know, the photographing of the item is important because first of all, you don't want it to be missing from your lot. And also, once again, the damage situation, you need proof, you know, that this thing was in this condition before, you know, it came into your possession or, you know, when the person is handing you the items over the counter that you won in the auction, especially if it's a box lot, like usually in a box lot, you might find one or two items that are worth way more than anything else in that box lot. And if that's what you've been going after, those are the items that you need to be protecting, you know, with your photographs. Um, the other thing is don't move items around. Do not try to hide items. You will never be invited back to an auction and it's almost like shoplifting, but it's not shoplifting because you didn't take the item out, but you are trying to trick um, do a crooked deed, if you will, um, to make that auction for that item go in your favor, which in a way is a theft because the items may have sold for more or, you know, maybe, who knows, they may have sold for less. I doubt it, but usually it's the more side that auctioneers are, you know, concerned about, which they should be. So never move an item. Um, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about as well as etiquette. You know, you want to, I'm going to say this delicately, but build a rapport, a rapport with the auctioneer. However, sucking up, kissing buttocks, 
is super negative. They've been in the business. They've dealt with every shyster out there. Not saying that you're shysty, but they've dealt with every shyster out there. Um, they can kind of see when people are just like trying to butter up. They've, they've been there. They've done that. Um, and so what you want to do though, is just, you know, have what I consider to be professional etiquette, the same etiquette you would use if you went to the bank, um, and you were, you know, depositing $10,000 and you're sitting there with a personal banker, um, trying to decide if you should simply make a deposit or if you should open up, um, a money market account or whatever, so you want to be professional. These people are not your friends. Um, in most cases, they are so busy, they don't have time to even make friends. So what you want to do is, you know, you don't want to come off as unknowledgeable and unfriendly, but sucking up does not help. As a matter of fact, it probably will irritate the person more than anything. And also, part of that etiquette is being prepared and paying attention during the auction, you know, no talking, your phone, your cellular phone, um, or any type of, of electronic device should be off before the auction ever starts. Um, I don't know of an auction house that allows you to videotape, um, or video record, I should say, or record, whatever. Listen to me, I'm old timey, videotape. Um, but, you know, if they allow that, which I would find hard to believe, you want to get permission. And of course, remember, you need to get the permission of everyone in that auction house because they're making a financial transaction. They may not want your, their images and their, you know, noise as they're, you know, bidding or whatever, um, to be on your video. So, you know, there's definitely some etiquette things as well as when you win the auction, you know, have that cash ready. Um, also, you know, um, get, collect your item, of course, like pay for your items, collect your items and safely get them out to your vehicle and leave the property. And the reason I say that is these auctions are usually held at night. So if you want to get on the worst side of an auctioneer, hang around, linger, they will get to a point where they may even ask you not to come back because you have to remember they have probably been at that auction house since like five, six o'clock in the morning. Now it's maybe 11 at night by the time that the auction is over 10, 11, whatever. And they're exhausted. They probably barely had a chance to eat and go to the bathroom. The last thing they want is for people to just be loitering around because they can't leave the property until all of you are gone. So, you know, just some minor etiquette things to know that will get you on the good side of an auctioneer um, are, you know, what I just said. But also, when you go into the auction house, you know, say hello to the employees. I don't care if it's the guy that's keeping the floor clean or if it's a cashier or if it's an auction house owner. Just say, you know, hello. Just say hi. Because the more times they see you at the auction house, there's a tip that'll be coming up in my next video that will tell you how to get things for free or things that you don't even have to um, bid on. So them, you know, knowing, wow, you know, I see her all the time here. That's pretty cool. Wow, she actually buys stuff at her auction. That's pretty awesome. Very friendly. Great etiquette. Nice and professional. Always pays. Never has an issue. Uh, you know, the, these are ways that you can get in without doing anything that's ridiculous or holding these people up or talking to them for a half hour when they only wanted to talk to you maybe for three minutes because they're super busy so that in the future you can get even better deals. Um, asking for a deal doesn't work. So that's bad etiquette. Don't do it. Um, as I stated before, auctioneers start the prices higher and they go lower. So wait, like I said before, you know, They'll go down two to three times, sometimes even four, especially if it's an auction house where they're like, everything has to go. 
they will go down as low as a dollar, but you need to make sure that that's part of their auction house rules. So you will know that before you ever start bidding. Um, and I know of one auction house I could think of right now who does that. And I know of two, uh, three others actually that don't do that, um, that we've dealt with. So the one that does that actually is like more of our favorite than the other two, I have to admit. And then there's another one who doesn't do that, but he's definitely almost like right there with the other guy because we get such great things from, from them. Um, but you know, the other part of that is if the item, let's say, let's say their lowest bid that they'll accept is $10 and we have an auction house that we deal with that does that, then you know that it's not going below 10 If that's the case, you know, don't raise your card and say five. Like that's, once again, the bad etiquette side and they will probably ignore you um, or they'll say something in front of all those people that you're sitting with and you don't want to be that person. Um, let's see. Oh, well, this is without saying. It's like the gambling thing where they say like, I don't even know what it is, but I don't, I'm not a gambler. But anyway, there's like those warnings about gambling. There's a warning about bidding and that's bid with your head, not above it. So if that item, and that's what I always tell people also is if you, when you go to the preview and you're writing down all your information, you should also, because you did research, you know, you went online, you know, you look that item up, you know, you should have a maximum amount that you're willing to bid written down next to that item that will help you not overpay for that item or get caught up in the fray. So whatever you do, don't overbid, especially if you're buying to resell, which is really what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this. We, we never bought anything to keep it. We always bought things to resell them. So if you're going to keep something, you know, maybe paying a few dollars more for it isn't a big deal. But if you are going to resell the item, like flip it, then you definitely need to pay attention to that tip. Um, I already talked about that. Okay, so because I have some of these topics I'm saving for my next video. So the other thing is take a moment and hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Please take a moment to do that right now. I would greatly appreciate it. It's like two o'clock in the morning and I'm making this video. So yes, I'm loopy. Um, and we have a project that we're doing tomorrow, so I have to go soon. But if you could do that for us, I would greatly appreciate it. But my next tip for you is shop around for auction houses. It's sort of like shopping around for a real estate agent or a plumber or when you buy a um, washing machine and dryer, you don't have to do business with the only auction house in town when just over the state line, there's probably a bunch of them. And in every state in the United States, there are several auction houses. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's where you should go and do your buying. And out of those, let's say that, and we'll stay in state, let's say that in your state you have 20 auction houses. Um, what you want to do is try to decide, first of all, how far do you want to drive to that auction house? Remember, you're doing this to grow your resale business. So that fuel and time is part of your cost. So how far do you want to drive? Then when you decide that, then look at now you're down to maybe five auction houses in your area. So out of the five, I would actually visit each and every one of them on the preview day. I wouldn't sign up for anything. I'm just there because on preview day, you actually could sign up for your bidder number um, and you could register like your um, personal information. When I say personal, it's like your name, your address, show me your driver's license, 
um, that kind of, some people will even pre-register their credit card or debit card or whatever. I wouldn't do that. Um, but you know, you can actually go there and preview without doing any of that. And when you're previewing, what you're looking for is, you know, does this auction house have like a lot of stuff under the tables on bottom, on bottom shelves? Um, how many auctions do they have in a day? What kind of stuff are they selling? Are there a lot of box lots, etc.? Like you're looking at the entire picture of everything I'm talking about in these videos. And when you decide that you found an auction house that, you know, meets whatever criteria you've set up for yourself, then you will, not that time, the next time you'll want to go out on the website look at their auction catalog just to get an idea because one of the things that I look for is specialty auctions. You find the best deals when these people are doing specialty auctions because everybody else and their mother and father is looking at those specialty items. They couldn't give two flying flamingos about the other stuff. So that means that you and probably seven or eight other dealers will be interested in the other stuff no one is paying attention to because it's not in the shiny catalog online, probably. So what you want to do is look for those specialty auctions and go to the preview and see if there's a lot of other miscellaneous items that are, you know, up, that are going to be up for auctions, auction as well, and concentrate on those. Um, and what should happen is you should end up, I mean, watch out for what you ask for, what you bid for, because you could end up with, you know, 30 lots that you won, or 50 lots that you won, or you could end up with five. So if you want to end up with five, you know, just know your limit and know to know when to stop. Or if you're in a resale business like we are, then you should always have room to grow. Like when we do our storage, we always make sure um, that we have room to grow and that we always have like stuff going out as well as the stuff coming in and stuff that's being donated versus the stuff that we know we're going to hold on to because it's not the right time to sell it, etc. So, and the reason I say that is versus bidding on those five lots, maybe it was a good idea for you to get 15 or 20 lots that day because remember in this business, once you, when you see it, usually that is the right time to buy. Um, you can't sit there and say, well... Maybe I'll get that, you know, box of children's books that are in perfect condition, circa 17 and 1800s with, oh my God, look at all these beautiful illustrations in them. They're of Oz. Um, I can't remember this. They're by this lady named Marguerite something. And I'm using like, this is actually a real example of what happened to us. Um, and you don't want to be the person to say, well, maybe I should wait. Those will come up in the future somewhere else. They're probably whatever. Um, that's not true. Thank God we got that box of books because in that box that we won, I think it was like 20 some odd dollars for it. Plus the fees. Um, we had about maybe $1,500 plus in children's books as well as there were a piece like a few pieces of children sterling silver um fork spoons like utensils at the bottom of the box like we couldn't believe what we were looking at and there were a few once again here we are with the toys miscellaneous old antique toys that were from the 1800s down below so you never know when the right time is to bid, but, or, you know, if at that auction, you're going to just walk out with five lots or 15, but if you have the room to grow in your inventory, and if the prices are really, really right that day, and there's not that much competition, or maybe there's zero competition, and usually that's what happens to us is we end up with very few people bidding against us, 
or with no competition whatsoever, um, then you need to take that opportunity to get that stuff. This is so much better than wasting your time at a Goodwill, which has taken out all of the good stuff. And in the future, I'm going to make a note right now. I am going to spill the beans on how like Goodwill's, it, it's mostly Goodwill and Salvation Army works, just because I know those two. Um, and this, and it'll be from an insider's view, um, because we've had employees or volunteers, we call them volunteers though, but we've had volunteers who have um, worked for both of those organizations extensively and they know the back room to the front counter and they know how this stuff, like the merchandise that comes in is cycled through the back door, the front door, etc. And yeah, I'm going to reveal some of that to you guys in a future video. So, um, hopefully the information I gave you so far is going to be helpful. Um, as I said, shopping for an auction house is super duper key because at the end of the day, you should end up with two or three auction houses that you, you know, you don't need to go to these things every week either. You could go like once every two or three months. Um, some people go every week. And they end up just with a bunch of stuff. Like, you don't want to be that person. And auction houses do not like when the stuff comes into their auction and then it ends up at another, like, you know, an auction house five miles away. So you don't want.